One of the things I like to do while I'm waiting for other components to finish drying is to prep the nose cone. Now, if you've read ahead in the instructions, uh, the instructions say don't paint or prime the nose cone. Just use it as is. And most likely the reason for that is this is either polyethylene or polypropylene, probably polyethylene, and it's not going to take paint well. And so one option is that you just leave this the way it is, set it aside, and put it on the rocket as is. Now, if you don't want to do that and actually want to paint the nose cone, then you're going to need to do some considerable preparation for it in order to keep paint on it. So to start with, I'm going to sand this. Uh, with some fine sandpaper to begin with here, and especially around this seam here that's really, really prominent. We're going to need to fill part of that. And then I'm also going to lightly sand all the way around the nose cone. And this will just make it easier for the paint to adhere. Now you don't need to do this really deeply or really hard. Um, you can also use finer sandpaper if you want to use some 220, that works well. I'm going to actually use both. I'm going to start with 150 here. Actually, it's 120, I think. Um, and then I'm going to use some filler putty to fill in the uh, grooves towards the top. And after that's set, I'll use 220 throughout to smooth it out. Okay, so the, the areas that need the most attention here are on either side of the nose toward the tip where you can see there's quite a gap there in the seam. Everything has dried now. Um, the launch lug with its standoff here, and the putty on the nose cone. And I'm just going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and sand that putty down. Okay, we're almost there. By the time I get done with this, there shouldn't be a whole lot of putty left. It'll just be little bits here and there that have filled in the low spots. Alright, and that pretty much fills them up. Um, there are a little bit of seam right there, but this should be filled in with primer. And this feels like it's polyethylene, uh, might be polypropylene. But what this means is that paint is not going to want to stick to this very well. And so I recommend using um, either a primer that is specific for plastic or an, uh, an basically an, an adhesion promoter, um, which is also basically a type of primer that you put on here first, and then you put your primer and paint over that. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean the dust off of this, and when we come back, we'll put the other launch lug on. So this is the Ford launch lug assembly, and I completed this earlier, and this is going to get glued on right here. Uh, but first we want to look at the aft launch lug, and it's still in two pieces here. And the reason for that is we need to make a little bit of a trim here. Um, and this actually is, turns out to be just the right length. So this is going to go between the ring and the metallic shield piece here. Um, and in some cases this may need to be cut. Uh, it turns out in my kit it's just the right size. So here I can go ahead and put this together just like I did the previous one. However, if your placement is such that this is a little bit too long, then just go ahead and trim this so that it fits. Um, and you notice here I got a little crack in my ring. I tried super gluing that and it didn't hold very well. Um, but because of its placement here, what I'll be able to do is use a little more wood glue on that. And I'm going to put the launch lug so that it's actually flush against the ring there, and that will hide that crack as well as reinforce it. And so I am going to go ahead and trim the same length here as the width of the ring. I'm just going to make a little mark there. Okay, and now when I put this in place and put the launch lug on top of that, everything is nice and flush. So what I will do here is treat this the same way I did the previous one. I'm going to go ahead and attach the standoff the launch lug uh, and I'll apply the glue to the standoff so I don't get excess beyond its length. So now when I put this together I'll put one end flush with the launch lug and the other end will become flush with the ring. So I've got that little bit of piece there. I'm just going to wipe away some excess here. And now I'm going to let that dry, and when I come back, we'll put both launch lugs onto the rocket. Now that the launch lugs have dried, I can go ahead and install these. And so the forward one will go here at the 11 inch mark we made earlier, and then the aft one, as I said, will um, come in right at the ring there. So we just need a little bit more glue. Alright, and recall we did roughen the uh, glassine up on these. Um, if you have not done that already, I would suggest doing it before putting these on. I'm just going to center them along the line there. And then do the same with the aft one. And then here I'm going to put a little dab of glue right on the ring. And this will go on. And then once again center it along the line. And then sight down so that you can make sure that they are in alignment. 
and then make any adjustments as necessary. Okay, so those look pretty good. I'm going to let that dry for a little while here. Now, for the next part, we're going to be doing the fin plates. And so these are all the little tiny guys here. And there are actually two types here. Okay, so one of these is narrower, and that is going to go on the body tube. And then the, the wider one will go at a 90 degree angle to that on the fin, as it's shown here. Um, eight millimeters from the forward end of the metallic sheath there. <clears throat> now if you want to, you can use some sanding sealer on these. You can sand them lightly. You could prime them ahead of time. Uh, personally what I'm going to do is go ahead and put them on as is and then I will spray primer the entire rocket and then fill in any uh, remaining grain using a little bit of brushed on paint. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure eight millimeters here from the edge of that metallic sheath tube. I'm just going to make a little tiny mark on a fin or on the tube here. Kind of depends on which side it's facing easily. Okay, and then I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay, so now we've got marks all the way around there. Okay, so according to the instructions, we want to put the larger ones on first. Those are the ones that go up against the fins themselves. So that will be one of these pieces that has um, square corners all the way around. For this step, I'm going to use a cotton applicator here. Um, you don't have to. You can use a little stick applicator that came with the kit. Or you just use your finger. This just gives me a little bit more control without getting my fingers all gooey. Or at least as gooey. So here I want to get a, a uniform but thin coat of glue. And I'm going to stick that up against the fin here at my mark. like that. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the facing fin. tube side on. And if you recall, the instructions said not to do fin fillets yet, and this is the reason why. Is if we had fin fillets in place, these would not um, be able to be applied flat up against the fin and the body tube. Now if you may have a little bit of excess glue, and if it's interfering with placing these in, then go ahead and use a small file or some sandpaper to remove that glue before you try and put these down.
Okay, and then we just need to repeat this on the other three faces of the fins as we go all the way around. And I will do that off camera. Now that all the glue has dried again, uh, we can put in the fillets on the fins and around the ring and also on the launch lug. Now we just be a bit careful here. Um, on the fins, we'll put a fillet here. Uh, we'll put a fillet around the ring and a fillet up here and also down here at the base of the fin but we don't want to put a fillet in the fin braces themselves. Okay, so we need to do a little bit of fine control there. Um, and again, we will put fillets all the way around the ring here on both sides, uh, although they should be very small. It's mainly just to glue this in place rather than provide additional streamlining. <clears throat> and then depending how your glue looks on your launch lugs, you may want some additional glue as fillets there. Okay, so I'm just going to start here with a bead of glue. All right, and then I'm going to smooth that in with my finger. Okay, and now you can see here I'm getting glue up along the ring, but we don't want too much. So here, I'm going to wipe off this excess and just kind of butt it up against the ring there. Um, we don't necessarily need to do a circumferential smoothing. Um, for one thing, my finger is just too big for that. All right, so that's one region. And then we need a little back here. Okay, and again, I'm just going to smooth that out. Okay, and then up here. And I have a little bit of a gap there, so I'm going to use just a little more glue to fill that in. Just like that. And then I can continue to the next side of the fin there with the excess glue on my finger. I need to fill that in a little bit. Okay, but that's everything we need to do for one fin there and a little bit along the ring. I'm going to do the rest of the fins as well as the launch lugs off camera uh, because there are just a lot of fillets to do and we really don't need to waste a lot of on-camera time watching that. Now that all of the glue has dried, the next step is to install the baffle here. And so the first thing we need to do is simply find its center. So it's two inches long. I'm going to mark it here at one inch. And then this is going to be glued in here to the main body tube, just like that. Okay, and then after that, the instructions recommend painting this in sections rather than assembling the whole rocket and then painting it afterward. So let's start with the baffle here. And what I'm going to do is just put a bead of glue right along the inside surface here. And then simply push this in. I'm going to turn it back and forth a little bit as I do and just helps spread the glue. Okay, until I reach my mark there. And this should have the screw eye sticking out the forward end here. If you've got it reversed, you've got it in backwards. You need to pull it out quick and stick it back in the right way. Once the baffle is glued in place, then we're going to tie on the shock cord here. And this can simply be tied in a couple of half hitches. Okay. 
And then I like to put just a little bit of glue right on the knot, and that just helps keep it from slipping later on. And just kind of work it around into the knot itself. <clears throat> and then the excess here, I'm going to cut off. I'm going to leave just a quarter inch or so there, just so it doesn't accidentally pull through. And now we need to add one of the two upper body tubes here. And so now I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of glue on this. Okay, so you see that there? And I'm going to go ahead and use my finger and just smear that around a little bit. So I have big blobs. Because what we're going to have to do then is um, snake the actual shock cord through, preferably without getting it really gluey. Okay, like that. And I'm just going to slide the two halves together. And then give them a twist around to make sure the glue is distributed well throughout. And if you want, you can line up the spirals like that. It's not necessary. Okay, and now I can let this dry. And then we'll um, assemble all the rest of the pieces for painting. Although we won't glue them together quite yet. So to paint, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, attach the antenna assembly onto here and then the second upper body tube spray paint all that with primer and then take it back apart again to spray paint the rest of it. According to the instructions the whole rocket should be put together with dry fitting of the upper parts and then spray primered and spray painted white all at once. And then after that, we would take apart the dry fit materials and spray paint the main body of the rocket orange, with the exception of two inches here at the top, which will remain white. And then the fins will also be um, mostly white with one black one. Okay, and I'm not going to show all of the paint steps here just for uh, time purposes. I will go ahead and paint the whole rocket and then many of the detail work is best done with uh, a brush and hand painting rather than trying to spray it. Okay, but to prepare this for priming in the base coat of white, uh, first we'll take the antenna array here and stick our shock cord through that all the way up and then that's just going to fit in here. And then we'll take the uppermost body tube piece and slide our shock cord down through there as well. And then put that on like that. And then the excess shock cord we can just kind of bunch up and stuff back down into the tube. this and you can just put some tissue or some paper towel down in there to keep it from coming back out. Now notice this is kind of loose but that's okay. Um, and then we're going to go through spray paint this whole thing and once we have our white base coat on then we'll come back and remove this piece and this piece do our trim work on the paint of the main part of the body tube and then assemble the rest of this. And recall, uh, you don't need to do anything to the nose cone if you don't want to. Um, according to the kit directions, it, it's left unpainted. Uh, but if you do want to paint it, then use the, the preparatory steps that I showed earlier in the video. 
Now I am not going to go through all of the painting and finishing and decal work in this video uh, because even here in Arkansas winter weather is starting to set in and painting is getting kind of difficult. So I'm going to show you how this would go together but keep in mind the instructions say it's easier to paint this first before doing this final assembly. Okay, so I've already got my main body tube here with the um, first of the two short extensions and this has gone over our uh, baffle and so the the shock cord here is attached to the baffle screw eye inside the rocket and we still have these two pieces now again these would normally be painted by now uh, but what you'll do is glue this okay so we put a, a layer of glue inside the opening of the body tube there and then this would fit on okay this is a little antenna assembly now before we can fit that on we need to thread the shock cord through here okay and right here there's a little notch and this is going to line up with the launch lugs so I would put in a good layer of wood glue here and then the, the indentations and ridges in the uh, antenna assembly will hold that glue and so even though it's plastic the wood glue will still hold it in place. All right, Rotate this to line up this notch with the launch lugs and if you need to you can extend the launch lug line here all the way up to make that alignment easier. All right, and then we would also take the second extension tube here. This is going to go on the top of the antenna assembly. And this goes on kind of the same way. So you'll have a layer of glue along the edge there. We would feed the shock cord through that. Okay, And you want to be careful you don't get the shock cord in the glue and then this would go into the glue here give it a little twist to seat it well and then we have the shock cord remaining here now setting aside the rocket for the moment um, next I want to go to the nose cone and the parachute here and the parachute comes pre-strung, so you don't have to worry about adding the shroud lines to it. And the first thing I'm going to do is just gather up the, the three loops here that make up the shroud lines. And then I'm going to hold the parachute in the center here, like this. Okay, and I'm just adjusting the shroud lines a little bit. Um, by moving them one way or the other here until all those corners come close to lining up. And then over here on my thumb, then I've got the midpoint of the shroud lines. Now you can do this in one of two ways. Um, according to the instructions, we simply pass this loop of shroud lines through the eyelet on the nose cone. like that, still holding on to the loop, and then you pull that through and pull the nose cone through the loop and carefully let this tighten up so you don't change the, the length of the shroud lines. Okay. Now, if you've seen any of my other rocketry videos, you'll know that I don't like to do this. Okay. Instead, I prefer to use a snap swivel as my connection to the nose cone. Uh, and this is for a couple of reasons. One is it makes the parachute removable. So if I'm going to store my rocket for a long time, for example, I don't have to keep the, the parachute all crumpled up inside where the, later on it may have trouble opening up. And this also allows me to change out parachutes quickly if I need to. So if I have a particularly windy day, um, I might drop down to a slightly smaller parachute. 
So to put the snap swivel on, once again I'm going to resize here, make sure everything is still the same length, and it is. And now I'm going to take a snap swivel, and I just get these at the fishing department of my local um, department store. And on the swivel end here, I'm going to pass that through, or pass the shroud lines through the swivel part here. If they'll cooperate, there we go. Okay, and then, let me get this on camera here. Alright, so there's my swivel hanging there, and I'm going to pass it through the loops of the shroud lines and then gently take in the slack and that is going to pull itself into a knot right there on the swivel side. Okay. And then I prefer to put just a little bit of white or wood glue on that knot. And it doesn't take much. I'm just going to put a little bit on my finger here. And I'm just going to work that into the knot there. And this will just keep the shroud lines from coming loose and repositioning themselves. Okay. And another advantage to doing this is now that when the, the rocket's coming down, um, parachutes are rarely completely perfectly symmetrical. And so they, they tend to have a little bit um, of favoring on one side or the other, and this makes them twist as they come down. And this takes out some of that twist. It allows the, the parachute to rotate around the swivel there instead of um, twisting up the shroud lines. Okay, and then this attaches to the nose cone. Now, the size of the snap swivel does not matter in terms of how much weight it can uh, hold. What matters is whether or not it can get around this. Okay, so this type of swivel I've got has a, a fairly large snap piece to it that can go around here. Um, but any snap swivel that will fit on here is going to be easily rated for the types of forces that will be experienced by a model rocket of this size. Okay, and then our final assembly task now is to take the shock cord and pass that through the eyelet as well. And you can take off the snap swivel here if you want. I'm going to do that just so it's out of my way. Um, if you tied the, the shrouds on, then you're going to have them in the way there. That's another reason to use a snap swivel. Okay, so here I'm just going to tie on a couple of half, hitch, half hitches. Alright, or a double knot for those who are not knotty. Alright, and just leave about a quarter to half an inch of rubber here on the edge. If you have more than that, go ahead and cut it off because you don't want to have the chance of this getting up onto the shoulder where it can interfere with the proper ejection. Uh, and then like with the um, parachute shrouds, you can put a little bit of glue on here to keep that knot tight. Now I'm not going to completely tighten this knot because I still have painting to do. And as I said, this is going to be easier to paint if you do it in parts. So I'm going to go ahead and untie that again. Okay, but from an assembly point of view, this rocket is done. I'm not going to show the painting and decals on this video simply because right now the weather is not conducive to painting. Um, now, if you do need help with decals in particular, both the water slide type and the vinyl type, and this kit does have both. All right, so these are uh, vinyl decals, and these are the water slide decals. You can go to my videos on the Rocketarium KSR 420 or the Rocketarium Alamo. Both of those videos have both of these types of decals and they're used in similar ways. And so you can check those out if you need a little assistance with putting the decals on. 
With that, I am going to end this video, and I hope you have a good build, a safe flight, and a safe recovery. And you'll see me next time.